All right. So um, if we can easily uh, create our um, create our polylines, right, conditionally, let's take one step back and talk about how those polylines are being outputted, right? Um, we uh, noted before that we created a list called cells. And up until now, everything that we've been using to define what comes out of the GH Python object has been a list, right? But that's not always the greatest way to um, send out your uh, your, your final information back to uh, Grasshopper. So Grasshopper stores information or data in a hierarchical manner through data trees, right? So in our Python script, we can also send out our resulting polylines through uh, a data tree output, right? So that not a list, but a data tree, right? Where we can specify based on our logic how our geometry will come out uh, on uh, a certain list or path, right? So here's a, a kind of preview of what we're going to do next, right? Um, we're going to take our script and modify it, the one we just finished with, modify it so that it um, allows us to uh, define a data tree output. And you'll see that there's uh, the kind of main differences between what we've um, done thus far and what we see here, if we take a step back, is just that there's a lot more things that are going on here at the top, right? Where we have to import some more stuff, uh, some new modules, so that we can uh, work with our data trees. Otherwise, there's not too much more to it, right? So um, let's go back to our um, most recent file, and let's um, go into the um, script, and we'll make a modification. Now, uh, some of this is um, actually going to be working with Rhino Common, and Rhino Common is Rhino 5's uh, core uh, geometry and uh, number engine. Right, so um, it it in the, if you're familiar with what's been going on between the developments of Rhino 4 to Rhino 5, uh, Rhino 4 uh, uh, grew and had many different ways to access the um, the NURBS library and the geometry libraries, etc. Um, and in that growth, there are a lot of different ways that you would access what's going on in the back end for Rhino. The Rhino Common um, uh, library is a, uni a unified library that allows anything to access it uh, with the .NET uh, SDK. So that's, that means it's really powerful. Um, it's uh, familiar if you're doing this inside of Grasshopper or just in the Python editor or you're making your own plugin. Um, you can access the Rhino Common in, in the same way in all three of those scenarios. Okay, so uh, that means that we're going to have to do a few things a little bit different inside of the script, um, but uh, and this will be a kind of introduction to uh, Rhino Common, and um, we're and we'll we'll kind of go through it step by step so that we're comfortable with making the changes between our Rhino script syntax and our Rhino Common syntax. Okay, so let's save this and go on to the. Um, the next uh, file. I'm going to save this as outputting data trees. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, open the uh, script editor. And here we're going to need to make a number of modifications. All right. Um, so the first thing is that in addition to importing the Rhino script syntax module, we also need to import uh, the Rhino Common syntax module. And again, there's no way to access the data tree creation without doing this, right? So um, it's just a, a necessary step. Um, it'd be interesting if it could. Um, maybe that's a good request in the near future, but um, the, for now, the only way to do it is through Rhino Common. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the Rhino Common Syntax module. Uh, the next step is that we're going to um, actually go to the uh, .NET Common Language Runtime 
which is a way for us to go to the Windows level uh, modules to access um, the sub-assemblies of Grasshopper. That's a lot of technical uh, verbiage, but um, the key thing key is that we need to go outside of Rhino to our Windows level um, uh, access and move back down into all the different parts of what makes up Grasshopper. So to do so, um, we're going to import uh, the .NET common language runtime. Um, and then within that, we're going to import the Grasshopper module. So this is um, looking to your C drive wherever Grasshopper is installed and um, bringing that in as another set of uh, methods that we can use. And then within that, we need to uh, dig down further and import the path and data tree submodules. Okay, now um, again, this is uh, kind of a little bit technically advanced, but um, it's not too far off from the concepts that we've been working with just now in terms of dictionaries and lists. It's just that this initial part uh, um, we have to do that so that we can um, we can actually access the right methods. All right, so um, that completes all of the uh, portion where we're bringing in the uh, necessary um, uh, modules. And then within the rest of the script, there's very only a few modifications, right? Here we need to um, create a data tree um, that all of our results are going to go on to. And um, a key note here is that the data tree has to be created with the data type um, defined, right? Grasshopper, as we mentioned earlier, uses special classes to store every type of data, right? Um, so whenever we make a data tree, we have to say it's going to be of type integer or type point or type curve, etc. Right? Right. So then um, this all stays the same. Um, here we need to. Uh, make a modification, and we need to uh, create our point using Rhino common methods. All right, so evaluate surface, rs.evaluate surface is going to need to be updated. We're also going to need to do that down below. Uh, so copy that, and anywhere we make geometry, when we make our quad, when we make our triangle, when we make our other triangle, it's going to have to use the Rhino common methods. All right. And then the last thing is that um, instead of adding the uh, resulting polylines to a list of cells, we actually want to um, send the polylines to the data tree. Right? So we're going to store them on the data tree instead of on the list. And we'll do that here, here. And really a data tree is a dictionary. It, is, um, it allows us to store uh, data with a particular key associated with it. Right? If you're familiar with using data trees in Grasshopper, this kind of format of uh, curly brackets, index, semicolon, index, dot, 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 more. If there's more, there will be more um, index values there. And then close curly bracket. Um, that, that right there is a key. And in this case, it's just storing multiple things. Right? So um, we're going to send the polylines to the data tree as we go. And then at the very end, we're going to um, return the data tree, right, which is send it to the output. All right. So um, just a few lines of code to um, to add, and let's go ahead and um, and finish this script off, right? So we're going to import the Rhino uh, module. If you see, um, it pops up right there. That's the one we want. Import Rhino. 
And this is the part that um, is tricky, and let's just do it, and we'll come back to it if you have questions. We're going to import, and this is a keyword, CLR, Common Language Runtime. Once we do that, we can, from the CLR, if we type it in again, CLR dot add reference, open parentheses, and this is quotes, grasshopper. And it's syntax specific. So make sure it says adds a reference to the .NET assembly. So it's uh, in real time uh, adding grasshopper to the assembly that this script can use. So we'll add that reference grasshopper. Then we need to import the path and data tree submodules. Right? So from grasshopper dot kernel dot data from that particular location in the in the reference, we're going to import gh underscore path. This is a keyword defining um, the module that goes along with creating paths. Right? We're also going to import the data tree submodule. So from grasshopper import data tree, one word, camel case. Okay, <clears throat> so that gets us through uh, the kind of hairy part where we're actually having to um, access the Grasshopper assembly on C drive and uh, be able to access these methods.